been heavily influenced by, um, you know, all of the traumatic events that have been happening, all of the kind of like aggressive attitudes that a lot of people have been showing and just a lot of the battles that have been happening constantly throughout, you know, the year. Um, so my artwork has changed um, just a little bit. It still follows through um, with a lot of my older artwork as well, because I'm still talking about personal experiences and how they relate to, you know, today's world and the psyche and someone's state of mind and stuff. Um, so it still follows through with that ide ideology. Um, it's just that a lot of my artwork now or that I, that I have created has talked about issues that I've experienced with colorism, uh, racism, um, also my meditations on like life and death and you know how being a black man that kind of like gives you a different perspective um, on how to handle those issues as well. Like you get a different perspective on um, death and life and what that means to you. Um, so I've been creating a lot of stuff that deal with those topics um, of kind of showing people, you know, what I actually deal with as an African-American male, um, the injustices that I see and I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and stuff as well too. So I say the pandemic has helped with um, kind of starting that off because I've always wanted to go within that route um, and kind of show a lot of show a lot of that um, different aspect within my art. The basis for any of my projects or my process starts with an observation because I, I came from like a drawing painting background um, and graphic design. I sketch out everything first. Um, so I create a couple different iterations of what I want to do in my mind, uh, put it on paper, and then I'll create something with photography physically. So for um, my insects projects, I'll take different options of based on my sketches so that it comes to life. And then whatever that first piece is, I'll expand from that first piece. And then it just blossoms from there, whatever um, ideas I add onto it or materials. Um, but yeah, it just starts with an idea and a sketchbook. I started out drawing comic book and like cartoon characters. So it went from drawing and photography was always around. My mother always took pictures and um, my family pictures of us. And she always had the Kodak disposable point and shoot cameras. And she would give me one to take to school for any, any events. I was used to taking pictures that way of my friends. Um, and I enjoyed it, I really did. But I didn't think about it as a career until later in my life. So that's why I, I wanted to do graphic design first um, and then found my way back to photography after that. But yeah, it's always been around. A lot of what inspires my practice is images of cells and agates, uh, lace lichen, um, tree ring patterns. Um, so looking is always kind of the first step. I, I don't really know how or why that happened. I think it's because I grew up, because of where I grew up in Michigan um, and going to the Upper Peninsula and my aunt is a mineral artist and just being around a lot of these uh, natural um, for like rocks and, and nature and trees and uh, algae, like it just, it's what I know. Um, so I think it kind of implanted itself in my mind and is always there. <laughs> when the when the virus first started and I was like that, at that point I was actually like working on writing my thesis paper and having to write down these forms could be so many things, but one of the things they could be and are often seen as is a virus I was like, oh, oh no, <laughs> um, I, I like, I don't want like this really dangerous thing that's like happening to all of us right now. Like, I don't want um, these things to be, you know, that like, 
It's it was it was a really hard time already, and then trying to like keep in my brain the fact that like the forms that I've been making for so long, not so long, but like long enough, um, are also seen as a virus and like the way that viruses look are so beautiful, but like it was a like wake up call to like be like, they're beautiful, but also like it's it's serious, it's real bad. Um, and then after that, I kind of just had to like put that out of my brain and focus on like some of the other ways that my work is read and interpreted. Prints are inherently bold, I would say, especially woodcuts, and that's why I choose to make them. I really love their graphic quality and how um, their intensity shows through in, in no matter what the uh, actual subject matter is. They're, they're really in your face uh, a lot of the time, and in the way that um, you're also creating uh, multiples with prints, you're kind of also giving it more life than it generally would have if it's just one object. It's sort of um, manifesting itself into the world a little bit more by looking at it more, by actually making the work, printing it, and then disseminating it. You're kind of sending it in every direction, both figuratively and literally, like all your thoughts at once. So I think prints are meant to be bold, and I'm happy that my prints come across that way, I guess. I guess the most exciting element right now in my studio practice is combining both my print language with my painting language, because they seem so disparate, but when using paint to kind of mimic both of them, they sort of merge together into one exciting thing, which I've been after for a long time, so. Yeah, any anything and everything is political right now. Even if you're making landscape paintings and it feels irrelevant, it's very much um, a political statement in my eyes. Um, it's a pause from capitalism. It's um, referencing the environment. So it's got a lot underlining that is um, political in a sense. So I feel like any art right now is going to be sort of the end of the tale of the serpent eating itself. It's kind of just a reflection of what society is going through right now. And there's no way to separate the two.